some of the the collections you've got here, you've got a flying flea here. I mean, that's that is incredible. You don't see many of those around. You know, is, uh, is this one actually fly? Uh, you know, an, an original? Fly. It used to fly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know that would fly now, but um, it would need quite a bit of work on it. But it it was a uh, French aircraft. Yeah, which uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which well, goes back prior to World War Two, I think even. Yeah, yeah. The interesting thing about this is the actual uh, layout of the wings. It was actually a tandem wing and not a biplane, as most people would uh, recognise it as. Yeah. Um, and and a, a good lesson in aerodynamics because uh, these things used to fall out of the sky, especially when the guys used to come in to land and they would crash. And and we could probably. Uh, explain how these things worked uh, by a few diagrams so we'll probably have a bit of a look at that now. Now here's a brief and quick explanation as to why the flying flea had its flaws especially when coming into land. Now when on approach to land the pilot would push the stick forward to gain speed for the flare and landing. Now as the speed built up the rear wing operating at a greater angle of attack would gain lift and pitch the aircraft's nose further downwards. Uh, now, unfortunately, the pilot's normal reaction would be to pull back on the stick. Uh, now, this action would increase the angle of attack on the front wing by lowering the trailing edge of the wing. Now, because the trailing edge of the front wing was close to the leading edge of the rear wing, the front wing's downwash, or, or airflow, would accelerate the air over the rear wing and cause it to gain lift more quickly than the front wing. And that would uh, result in an ever-increasing nose pitch and the flight would uh, direct itself into the ground.